Hello, hello, welcome to another edition of Soccer As We Like It, the Euro 2020. As you know, if you're a football follower, you've heard the noise, you've heard the sing, you've heard the song, football's coming home. You ask, what does this song actually mean? As an Americans, they've asked me, Tim, you're from England, what does that mean? So I'm here to break down what football coming home means, but also the game is on Sunday. Is England's biggest final game in reference to this is the biggest thing that's happened to England since 1966 and winning the World War in, in the 1950s, the Second World War. So for England to win the trophy on Sunday would be astronomical. I mean, astronomical. So microscopically thinking and looking at this from a microscopical point of view, what does it all mean? We are here, I'm here to break it down as a Brit to what it means to Americans, the understanding, the lyrics of that particular song, which was sung by Bidoon and Skinner in 1996. So, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and drop your comments. Let's get right into the meat and potatoes. Now, let's get right to it. The song goes, football's coming home, football's coming home, it's coming home, it's coming home. Yes, so what is coming home? Then he said, three lines on the shirt, jewels remain still gleaming, 30 years of hurt, never stops me dreaming. That four lines is very pivotal to the whole song because it shows you what it all means and I'm going to glue it all together for you. Three lines on the shirt, you ask Tim, asking Tim, asking me, what the hell is three lines on the shirt mean? I said, all right. Three lines is the official symbol of the English Football Association's logo. That's number one. But where did it come from? It came back from the days where England were always fighting wars, the King's days, where they, all they did was conquer places and take over, conquer and take over. That's all they did. So it always symbolized what did a lion mean? Braveheart, courageousness, toughness, fearlessness and confident is what they always represented a lion with back in the day. We're talking the 15th century, which is 1400s. So, um, there was a king, King Henry I. He married a woman whose father had a lion and he adopted that symbol. So when he went on his, 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 uh, conquest, on his conquest, he wore his lion with pride he wore his hat, his, his throne, got the horses and they put the swords. They had the, because that symbol of the shield with one line showed we are fearless. It represented who they were. See what I mean? Then his son, his son, Henry II, also married a family who adopted lines. So he also, got, all right, so there's now two lines added on. So they now have two lines on the symbols. So it's like collecting symbols to make your your package, make your, your uniform. But their grandson, Richard the Brave Lionheart, he did fight some wars, combined all three together, making it the three lions. And he had the three lions on a golden, three golden lions on a red background, which made it like his attire. And it was used by most kings back in the day. So you had the three lions, on a red background, which was adopted as the England symbol. And that they introduced that to the English football in the Football Association in the good old days where football was introduced officially to the world in 1860. So, that is the part of the free lines on the shirt. That's where the free lines come. It's the bravery, the courageousness, the fearlessness, and the, this, the drive to succeed and be a winner. You are not scared. You are bold, you're brave, you're fearless as an English lion. That is why the three lines on the shirt is the bravery of England during the wars, when they fought wars. So that's the story of the three lines on the shirt. The jewels remain still gleaming. The jewels remain is a World Cup trophy, which was named after a guy called Julius Remey, who was working for FIFA in the 1930s and 1940s. So they named the World Cup after him. The World Cup initially was called Victory. So after Victory in the 1930s, they called it the Julius Remey Trophy. And that trophy went from 1934 to 1970 and was named after the FIFA president at the time. But 
Julius remake still gleaming. What does that come into? England won the World Cup in 1966. And that was the pro trophy that was presented to England. And that's the only trophy England have won since then. So football coming home is trying to say football that we invented is finally going to come home to where it all started. That's why football is coming home. Now you follow me. Also, the Jules Rimet trophy was, was taken out of circulation in 1970 after Brazil had won it three times. And a new trophy was introduced, the FIFA World Cup, which has the, the global ball, the global soccer map on the top of the, the person holding the trophy. You know what I mean, that golden thing. It's very expensive, very heavy. It's not light at all. So the Jules Rimet was the last trophy England won in 1966. So Jules Rimet still gleaming, so it's still shining. It's never been adapted. We've always had it as gleaming, but it's still the memories England still have of winning that World Cup in 1966. 30 years of hurt. This song, Football Canon, was done in 1996 when England were hosting the Euro tournament. The same tournament today, this tournament now, current going on currently, which ends on Sunday. In 1996, that's when this song was adopted. And when it was recorded, that's why 30 years of hurt, 96 from 66. So England have gone into tournaments, but they just always failed. Some have been close. 60s, 1996 was close. They got to the semi-finals. Even the England manager currently, Gary Salgate, he missed a penalty, which led to England not even getting to the finals in 1996. They've had close calls, 1990. Uh, 1990, they lost in the semi-finals on penalties. Last World Cup in the in fourth, they lost to Croatia in the semi-finals on on penalties. So they, they lost in normal time. Was it normal time? No, they lost on penalties. <laughs> Whatever. No, they didn't lose on penalties. They won in regular time. They lost on regular time. But it's the being close, but yet so far. So every time England are in a tournament, they always bring that song. It's re-released. It was released again in 1990. In the 1990s, it was released again in, in the 2018 World Cup. It was released again in 2020. It's, the, it's like an anthem. Football's coming home. It's coming home. Three lines on the shirt. Jules Rimet still gleaming. The only World Cup we won. 30 years of hurt. As in 1966 to when that song was released in 1996. It's still painful that nothing else had been achieved. But 1996 to now is another 25 years and we still haven't won nothing. So being that this is the only opportunity to win another trophy, that's why the whole country has gone completely bananas. So as it is now, we are over excited because it's never been that close. We've never been to a final. We've only been to one final ever. And that was 1966. Jules Rimet is still gleaming. The Jules Rimet trophy is the only gleaming trophy we have. So this would be an opportunity for England to show football's coming home. 30 years of hurt never stopped me dreaming. So even though I've had the pain of seeing all the pain of England failing at tournament after tournament after tournament after tournament, it never stopped me from dreaming that one day it will happen. Can this be the day on Sunday? Can it happen? Can England finally win a trophy since 1966? Because by then will be 55 years was the last time England won a trophy. Now that's a long time. That's half a that's half that's half a century, mate. <laughs> that is half a century the last time. For a country that invented the sport, it, it does hurt. So coming home means we invented a sport. For it to come home to where it all began means an absolute fabulous thing. It's homage that football is actually coming back to where it all began. So that is why it's coming home. There's some other football songs like World Order, which was in 1990 with John Barnes, even rapped on that song. Uh, um, Sweet Caroline, there's so many, but the, the football coming home stands out as number one because it's coming home. It has more intention, it has more passion to it because it's coming home to where it all began. So that's where the song Free Lions on the Shirt, Jules Rimet still gleaming, 30 years of hurt never stops me dreaming. That's where it all comes together. And that 
totals the whole song because it talks about Bobby Moore, the England captain, 1966, making a tackle, uh, Gary Lineker scoring. It brings everything. If you've seen the video, you'll see what I'm talking about. So over, I'm going to leave you with some clips of England celebrating and training after beating Denmark 2-1 in the last game. A lot of my friends, if I was back home, I would be out there singing, but not jumping on top of buses. No, 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 no. But singing, dancing, having a good time, an old jolly, go, you know, having a laugh and a giggle, having a few, a few lagers and bevies, you know what I mean. But since I'm not there, I can't. I could only celebrate by watching the game among my friends, and my American friends, and that's what it's going to be. On Sunday, we will be in the pub, cheering and screaming our heads off. If everything goes according to plan, yes, it means football has finally come home. I'm going to leave you some footage of the games. I mean, not the games. I'm going to show fans reacting, screaming and laughing and dancing, and that's what we're all about. A lot of Americans find it like, you guys are crazy. Yes, because that's the only sport that we are, we invented, but are not doing well, but we are the biggest fans all over the world. We, you, there's no England fan who doesn't follow football, kind of. You know what I mean? There's rugby, there's cricket. But in, in America, you have, you have American football, which you guys call soccer. And I mean, when an American comes to England or Europe and says soccer, they automatically know the word soccer used must be American because everywhere in the world it's football and I get it but we will be doing another documentary I mean a documentary in the summer how has soccer grown in the United States has it overtaken hockey as number four sport because you have American football you have basketball and you have baseball has soccer squeezed into that four spot we will know and we will do that documentary in the summer so stay tuned to watch our channel and follow us subscribe like and share and uh we'll keep you posted but this game on sunday is gonna be an astronomical game if england win and football comes home i will be moonwalking through the whole day and that's me i i love to dance i like to give a jiggle you know what i mean but we have to take our chances when the game the italians are no pushover. Let's not let's call that is. It's not going to be a walk in the park. It's going to be a very difficult game. If you thought Denmark was hard, Italy are because all the pressure is literally on England. The pressure is on England to deliver. The whole country is cheering for England. And if we win, the next day is a holiday. It's absolute holiday because no one's going to work. It's going to be a party, an absolute fucking brilliant party, without a doubt. Most of us were not born in, in the 60s when England won the World Cup. So in an era, 55 years later, to witness this in a social media era is absolutely phenomenal. From me, it's Tim Moss, your host. Don't forget to watch the footage that comes right as soon as this video ends. You just don't, you'll see the video clips and you'll see England fans. That's who we are. We love to have a, we love to have a laugh, a giggle. And yes, some people take it a bit too far. It is just the passion. I'll see you guys in our next video. Come on, England. Football must come home.